Welcome to MarcusG.TV. I am Chef Marcus Giuliano and I'm a chef on a mission. Today's mission is doing a little critique of Tom Colicchio, um, specifically about cooking oils. Okay, now, I've been a fanatic for the longest, longest time that you do not cook with olive oil. And I interviewed Dr. Barry Sears here on my blog about a year ago. And Dr. Barry Sears is the author of The Zone Diet, very successful uh, published author on The Zone Diet. Um, the premise of the zone diet is all inflammatory foods and you avoid inflammatory foods because that's inflammation is a root cause of disease and a lot of top nutritionists and health experts and health gurus say yes that is true inflammation when you consume foods that cause inflammation that is where now you have chronic disease coming from so do you want to avoid inflammatory foods to live a healthier life plain and simple so olive oil now let's get the olive oil now Barry, Dr. Barry Sears on my blog said, point blank, he looked at the camera, he goes, olive oil is the most stupidest, cooking, cooking with olive oil is the most stupidest thing you could possibly ever do. And a lot of top nutritionists and health nuts agree with that. I stopped cooking with olive oil about 12, 13 years ago because I learned from Gary Knoll, uh, the PhD, the nutritionist out of New York City, that <laughs> it's detrimental to cook with olive oil. See, olive oil is a fruit. It has polyphenols in it. It's phenols. What are the healthy part of the fruit, because olives are fruit, like I said, um, deteriorate when it, get, when it gets exposed to light, oxygen, and heat being the worst. So when you put olive oil into a pan and it starts to heat up, you destroy the, those phenols. You destroy those very delicate properties in there. You wouldn't take um, cod liver oil. Cod liver oil is a very powerful um, anti-inflammatory oil. So is flax oil. Those are very high anti-inflammatory oils. Those are things we take as supplements, right? Well, if olive oil were to be invented today, it would be one of the top five most therapeutic things you could put into your body. It's really, really loaded with a lot of good things. However, you would never take flax oil or cod liver oil or krill oil and put it into a saute pan and start cooking with it, would you? No, because you know you buy these oils in in dark containers, they're refrigerated, the date's on them, you buy them, you bring them home, and you put them right in your refrigerator, and that's when you use them as a supplement, right from your refrigerator. Well, olive oil, in its true form, should be treated the same exact way. It's a very delicate oil, and the good producers know that. That's why they pack it in tin containers, and even a lot of warehouses, high-quality olive oil warehouses are refrigerated. Um, I've even bought an olive oil that's come to me frozen before because I don't want to <laughs> chance anything with the olive oil, okay? But olive oil has been bastardized across the country, across the world, and they keep producing more and more, and it keeps getting cheaper and cheaper, so they stretch it and do other things and second pressings and pure olive oil. So here's my critique of Tom Colicchio. Now, I have nothing against Tom Colicchio personally. I don't personally know him. Sure, he's a great guy. He looks good on camera. He does a good job for his, you know, for Top Chef. Um, and I, I personally don't know him, so um, I'm just going to critique a positive critique here on on what I see in his books and on the websites here about him okay I bought a copy of Think Like a Chef years ago there's a lot of great stuff in here like I said nothing personally against Tom Colicchio there he is in his younger days um, not what he looks like now on Top Chef so uh, the reason why I'm, I'm doing a blog like this is because the chefs have the power to make a difference, okay? A lot of people look up the chefs and they go to fancy high-end restaurants because it's the in thing to do, because it's for their self-esteem, it's to fit into an in crowd, and I was seen eating at this restaurant, or I, you know, I was at this restaurant and met the chef, and I ate his food and this food, he's a James Beard Award winner, so it's kind of clicky to be all in that, okay? That's what makes people feel good, because they don't really have any self-values, so they have to go fill these values, with these fake values of going to eat some fancy meal somewhere or something, okay? And they totally avoid the whole, well, is the food really healthy? Is it nourishing? Does the food have values? And is the food spiritual? And the food is, is it enlightening? No, they don't think about stuff like that. So they go spend too much money at these high-end restaurants where the chefs are downright poisoning you. Poisoning you beyond belief. You walk, I see the I see the food. I've been doing this for years. I've seen the food that these chefs do. I've been in these kitchens. I've worked in a Michelin three-star. I've worked at some high-end hotels here in, 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 in the country. I, I, I've seen stuff that is just atrocious and that's why I make these blocks I want them speaking out but somebody like Tom Colicchio or Mario Batali these guys are in the spotlight they can make a massive change by saying hey 
we're banning all GMOs in our restaurant. That would make me respect Tom Colicchio. That would make me respect Mar Tom, Mar Mar Mario Batali. Sure, they have successful restaurants. Sure, they make money. Sure, they write good books. Appear to be good books, best selling books, James Beard Award winners. They have great business plans. But man, I would respect you guys a lot more if you would just say, you know what, we want real food. And it's more than just listing on the side of your menu. We use this farm, this farm, this farm, and this farm. No, it's honoring every farm, every food. It's honoring every community that you put your dollar in. Where's your sugar coming from? Is it coming from slave labor? Sugar is one of the most polluting industries out there. It's a refined product. When they refine it and process it, it's very polluting. They use young boys to go out there and, and work the fields. Where's your chocolate coming from? It's coming from a fancy Belgium chocolate producer that uses slave labor out of Africa? You ask people, where's your chocolate from? It's from Belgium. Belgium doesn't grow chocolate. Africa grows chocolate. In fact, it grows all around the equator. So where's it coming from? Is it from South America? Is it from Indonesia? Where's it coming from? You know? So it's not, it's not just listing three or four or five or ten farms on the side of your menu that are local farms. It's about honoring where that dollar ends up in each community. And that's what I'm pissed off about. And that's why I wish these chefs would speak up and use their media power. And use it. If I, people said to me, you should go on Chopped. You should go on Top Chef. You should go on Chopped. People tell me that all the time. It's like if I got on the Chopped and I opened up the basket and I saw like foie gras or veal in there, I'd freaking throw that. I'd throw that at the judges. I'm like, are you serious? Are you serious? We're going on national TV and we're gonna, we're gonna disrespect food and producers and the animals that it came from? Is that, is that, what, we're, is that what we're doing here for money? Because I don't do that for money at my restaurant. I honestly don't, I couldn't. So, critique on Tom Cleek, I know this is going off. Think like a chef. Olive oil is the worst oil to cook with. Back to olive oil, that's what this topic was about. It becomes a carcinogen. Yes, a carcinogen when you heat it, so you don't want to do it. I know a lot of top chefs in the industry and in the restaurateurs do this. They cook with olive oil. Wrong. So, just a few recipes here. Um, when I was glancing through the book just now, um, pan fried zucchini, two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. Um, dredge the flower blossoms and flour, egg, then flour again, shaking off the excess. Fry the flour, fry the flour blossoms until crispy, two to three minutes per side, and that was done in a heated, a heated skillet with olive, with extra virgin olive oil. Page two hundred and twenty in his book. Okay, now um, here's another recipe: seared tuna with roasted tomato vinaigrette and fennel salad. Page one hundred and two. I just flipped through. I just flipped through like four or five pages. And these are what I, I'm sure if I dove into this book much more, there's a lot more in here. Pan sear the tuna with extra virgin olive oil. Heat a large, heavy skillet over medium heat. Add the oil. Sear the tuna on both sides. Oh my gosh! Here we go again. Page 97. Roasted tomato risotto. But here he just calls for two tablespoons of. Olive oil it doesn't say extra virgin olive oil, so I'm confused if that's a typo or if there's a specific reason why we're switching olive oils. It doesn't say here, which I would love if chefs did that. If they would really be more descriptive about why they're using certain ingredients and why to avoid certain ingredients. You know, they, we take a lot of great time. Like um, one of the book that I love is the Blanc Mange, Raymond Raymond Blanc. And you know, back in the late '80s when I was reading his books, he talked about the importance of organic foods. And how, you know, if you're going to eat chicken livers, you must have an organic chicken liver. Because that is going to be, the, basically, the liver is the filter system of the chicken. And you want to make sure it's a clean chicken. So that makes sense. Why can't Tom Click and these other people make big, bold statements like that? Avoid GMOs because they've been, they've been known to, to cause, you know, X, Y, Z in, in, the, in a lot of studies. The, the information is out there. It's absolutely out there. So this book was done in 2000. So I wanted to give Tom Clicker, because again, I have nothing against him. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. So I looked online to find some newer recipes that he's done. Maybe he's changed his ways. Maybe that was the old Tom Clicker. Maybe they don't cook with olive oil. I'm going to give it a fair shot. So I go online here. Tom Clicker's meatloaf. Uh, let's see. Uh, extra virgin olive oil. And we're again in a, in a skillet over medium heat, saute the onion until golden brown, you know. So he's still cooking with olive oil in his meatloaf recipe. But I wanted to make sure, so I gave it a fair shot to keep going through more of his recipes. Here's hanger steak with canola oil. 
And I found another recipe with canola oil too that he was using. So has he changed to canola oil? Now, is canola oil the best oil to cook with? You know, I would say it's better than olive oil, but here's the problem. The problem with canola oil is it's genetically modified. In most cases, it's genetically modified, and it's not expeller pressed. So it means it's not squeezed like an olive oil. You'd squeeze an olive oil, olive to make olive oil. It, they use a hexane gas, a solvent, to actually extract all of the oil from the actual uh, the canola plant from the rapeseed. So that's what they do. Okay, so they're using a harmful. Uh, you you wouldn't you wouldn't take hexane gas and use it in your food, would you? Wouldn't consume it, would you? It, you know, it's toxic at, at any level, but they're using that to extract, chemically extract the oils. And they do this with a lot of oils. It's just not canola. It's a lot of cottonseed, corn, any kind of oil, any kind of cheap oil you buy. That's what it's done. I'd love to see somebody like Tom Clicchio make a stance here. Okay, I I honestly can't in right conscience serve food that I wouldn't eat myself and I'm an educated chef and we're supposed to all be educated chefs and we're professionals and you know it, it's just it's like a doctor that won't give his own kid vaccines but then says you have to have vaccines this is what they're for and there's a lot of doctors like that Dr. Oz would be one of those okay so there's canola oil that I wish I'd see a better description on the safe way the safest way to consume canola oil um, Here's uh, Tom Colicchio's Rabbit Ragu and Soprasada. These recipes are all from 2009 to current time on these, when these recipes are published. Um, extra virgin olive oil here uh, to, uh, in a large, pull the rabbit, uh, yeah, he's in a, in a heat olive oil in a large enameled cast iron skillet or Dutch oven, okay? So again, cooking with olive oil. Um, there's another recipe in here where he's actually saying right before the smoke point, okay? You bring it up to right before the smoke point. Well, if you're an average home cook, wouldn't, you don't really know where the smoke point is. So the only way you're gonna know where the smoke point is is if it smokes, right? Because you're not gonna know. It's, it's hard. That's a hard thing to, to, to judge, okay? You know? So, what happens when you smoke oil? He never explained the recipe. When you smoke oil, that's the worst thing you want to consume. We talked about heating olive oil and being a carcinogen. Well, now all of a sudden it's like, it's like instead of smoking one cigarette, it's like smoking 10 at the same time. When you smoke the oil, you wouldn't do something that stupid to smoke 10 cigarettes at the same time, would you? No, you're st stupid enough to smoke one. A lot of people do, but you wouldn't shove your mouth with 10 every time, right? That's what it's like when you smoke a pan. That oil is to be discarded immediately. That is serious. Your body can't handle that. Can't handle the oil cooked to begin with. Now, what oils are best to cook with? That's the question I get all the time. You know, my personal favorite is coconut oil. Yes, coconut oil, that is the single best. It, 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 it lasts the highest heat resistance in a pan. It has a lot of incredible, incredible properties in it. Um, read book, Bruce Fife's book on, on the coconut oil, on coconut oil, coconut miracle, whatever it's called. Phenomenal book. Um, it has lauric acid. Lauric acid is a high immune um, builder. Um, I put olive oil in my hair, my skin. I even put it in my mouth and, and do oil pulling. Like people, Some people use sesame or olive oil. I actually douse my mouth with a bunch of coconut oil. I keep a quart of extra virgin raw expeller press coconut oil in my bathroom, and I use that for a lot of different things. Coconut oil be best. Macadamia nut oil is awesome to cook with. Another one, avocado oil. But, you know, the thing is, any oil you heat is going to suffer deterioration just because, again, light, oxygen, and heat, especially heat, deteriorate any oil. So just because an oil is better to cook with doesn't mean you should start making French fries with coconut oil and have that every single day. It's like just because you found a, a less of the evil on the sweeteners doesn't mean you can consume it constantly. No, it's just common sense. It's a, it's a scientific approach to saying, okay, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, and I want to minimize the damage of the food, the oxidation and the free radicals and all that kind of stuff, then this is what you should have if you, if you want to honor your body and have a better, you know, uh, what I want to say, just honor your body. Just honor your body, honor the food and respect yourself. You know, I, I honestly could not have a restaurant where I was willingly serving foods that 
the science just isn't there. It's not there. Now, that you know, might, might be an argument like, well, why don't you have a vegan restaurant, Marcus? You know, people, people have said to me, well, if you, if you have such strong beliefs on food, you should have a 100% vegan raw restaurant. You know, the way I started my health um, exploration 13 years ago was I went from feedlot beef to grass-fed beef. I went from farm salmon to wild salmon, farm shrimp to organically farm shrimp, to commodity eggs to local eggs. So people, that, so that's what we do at my restaurant. We take whatever you want to eat and we make it the best that we know you possibly can consume that. So I personally don't eat meat, but if you come to my restaurant, you're going to get the best meat that I feel that I can buy, that I can offer in a volume that I do. So that's what it's about. And I will tell you, I'll tell you if there's certain things that I don't believe in in my menu. And there's a lot of things that I personally wouldn't eat. But you know, being a vegetarian or a vegan actually, I, I'll taste. I will taste everything on my menu because, hey, that's, because I put my trust in, in my food. So I will taste it as a vegan. In fact, we have a lot of vegans, not a lot, but a few vegans, vegetarians that come to the restaurant that know they can get the best local steak and then will only eat steak at my restaurant. They'll treat themselves once a year and they'll say, you know what, I'll eat a steak at Marcus's restaurant because I know the care that he's doing. We get constant customer comments back. Thank you for taking the thinking out of our food. Thank you for taking the thought, the process, the care, so we don't have to ask questions and think because we trust you. We watch your videos. We read your menus. We can see that, okay, you're using the best salt possible, the best olive oil possible, the best this uh, possible, the best that, the best water possible, you know, high pH high antioxidant water. The people see that. We educate our people, our customers, our guests. They're educated. They know that. They can see that. Our staff is educated. So, you know, when I go out to eat, I ask so many questions. They're so frustrating. These people have no clue what's going on, what they're cooking, what the damage that they're doing, and the food that they're serving. Tom Clicchio has how many restaurants? Again, nothing personal against Tom Clicchio. Mario Batali has how many? Nothing against either one of them or any of these guys. But you guys have the massive power to make a difference here. You have the stance to get up there and say no GMOs, no trans fats. Instead, you guys wait until you know something's passed. Not maybe not them particularly, but these restaurants wait until something's passed where you can't have um, trans fats anymore in New York. No, let's take a stance. Tell the producers, tell the manufacturers, tell the farmers this is what it's about, and educate your staff. That's what it's about. That's when I have problems. You guys have so much power, so much media attention. Use it. Use it. Educate. Save our food. This is a food revolution we're going through. Help it. Even Jamie Oliver, he could do a little more. He's a phenomenal spokesperson for healthy, healthy food, especially healthy kids. But man, I've seen some of his stuff, and I, and I don't want to. I'm not not going to attack him or either. I don't personally know him. But man, these guys have the spotlight. Run with it. Run, run, run. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. Thanks for watching and watch what you eat.